Hello everyone. Today we are going to cover three more topics and you can expect another three questions or the use of these three things in the exam directly or indirectly. So we are going to cover tuned NTP and the use of system CTL command. So the first thing that we are going to cover is tuned. Tuned is a profile based system tuning tool that uses the UDAV device manager to monitor the connected devices and enables both the dynamic as well as static tuning of the system settings. So this tool tuned offers predefined profiles to handle for common use cases. For example, for high throughput or low latency or power saving. So you will be able to choose one of the mining profiles that are offered by the system. By default, Tuned will not dynamically adjust system settings, but you can modify how the Tuned daemon operates and allow it to dynamically alter settings based on system usage. And you can use the Tuned ADM command line tool to achieve all these things. So the command that you need to use is Tuned ADM. So here is the list of important commands that are related to Tuned. I show you the use of each one of them. To install tuned, if it is already not there in your system, you need to use yum install and then tuned. And then there is a list of tuned ADM commands. So I will discuss them one by one. List will list you all the profiles that are available in the system. Active will show you which is the active profile. If you want to select or change the active profile, then you need to use tuned ADM profile and then whatever profile you want to set. Recommend means what is the recommended profile for the system. So in the exam either they can give you one of the profiles or they can ask you to set up the recommended profile. Alright, so if they have not given you the profile directly, first you need to find out which is the recommended profile and then use the tuned ADM profile command to set up that particular profile. So second last is tuned ADM off if you want to turn this facility off and last one is active if you want to activate it again. So let us see all these things now in practical. So the first step is to install tuned. So to install use yum install tuned. So during download whenever it asks for any confirmation you press yes and enter so now you can see that the tuned is installed now once we have installed tuned we can now practice all the available commands with tuned adm so the very first one was list so it is going to list all the available profiles so these are all the available profiles so you can be asked to activate any one of them. So first let us check which is the active profile. So tuned ADM active. So now the current active profile is virtual guest. So not a suppose now I want to change it from virtual guest to balanced. So I will write tuned ADM profile and then balanced. So now the profile is changed. If we recheck again active profile, so now it is balanced. So similarly, they might ask you to set up any of the predefined profiles. The another option can be they ask you to set up a recommended profile. So let us first check which is the recommended profile. So write tuned ADM recommend. So the recommended profile is virtual guest. So this means we need to set up the profile to profile to virtual guest okay confirm this so this is what they can ask you to perform using tuned the second topic for today is NTP NTP stands for network time protocol NTP helps you to synchronize your system with any time server so what they can ask you, they can give you an address of a time server and ask you to synchronize your system with that particular 
time server. For example, the question can be configure the NTP server to run at and they will give you some address. Now NTP will use the crony service and the crony D daemon to perform or to synchronize the system with the required server. So we need to use the crony D daemon. So we have to install this particular package if it is not already there. So here again I am listing all the required steps and then I will perform all these one by one. So the first step is to install crony service. So yeah, I am install crony. Once we install crony we need to open the configuration file. So the configuration file path is etc crony.conf. Once you open that file you need to make one change there so that I will show you. So this is the command or the text that you need to write server and then whatever IP is given in the question space I burst. So this is what you need to write. All right. So I will show you. Now whenever you change anything in the configuration file you have to restart the service. So that's why once we change the configuration file we need to restart the service. To restart we need to use the system CTL command. So system CTL restart and then crony D and then you need to perform two more steps one you need to check this operation by using crony C sources minus C command now the last command which is the set NTP this enables or it disables the NTP synchronization for automatic time adjustment so you want the system to adjust the time automatically for that we have to set this value to true so if it is false then we need to use this command time date ctl set ntp to true. So now I am going to show you all these step by step. So the very first thing is we need to install crony c crony sorry alright. So once it is installed what we need to do is we need to open the configuration file which is etc. crony.conf alright in the very beginning you see this pool 2.rhel.pool so this line is already there you need to you need not to memorize much what we need to write simply you need to comment this and then write server because we are going to synchronize it with the server server and then you need to write here the IP address alright whatever IP is given in the question that you need to write here and then you need to write I burst. Okay, so this is what you need to do in the configuration file. Okay, here I am not writing any IP address, but you should mention here the IP address, whatever IP address or the web address that is given, whatever it is given. So let's suppose www.xyz.com, something like this will be given. So you need to do that. All right, save this file. And come out of it right after that since we have made change in the configuration file you need to restart so system ctl restart crony d daemon all right so after restarting you need to run the command crony c sources minus c and that's it okay one last thing is you need to check whether the NTP value is true or not. So if you run the time date CTL command, so you can see that. So it's already synchronized, it's already active. But in case it is not, what you need to do is time date CTL set NTP to true. Okay, let me set it to false first so that you can see the difference if I once again run this so now you can see it is inactive NTP service is inactive so if it is already inactive by default so what you need to do is time date CTL set NTP to true so this is what you need to do and it will reactivate the NTP service so this is all about regarding the use of NTP the last thing that we are going to cover is system CTL. 
so directly they will not ask you any question on this but you cannot skip this because you might have noticed this that I have used this command in the NTP question because whenever we download any package we need to start that particular service or we need to enable that particular service all right so system CTL gives you the control over the services that are already running or that you want to run in the system so the important commands I'm going to discuss here first one is the status system CTL status status tells you whether the service is running or not if it is not then we have to start that service how to start it using system CTL start whenever you download any package it's a good practice that you start it although most of the time it will automatically start but still you can use the system CTL start command to start it then again the corresponding is stop like whenever we change the configuration file we have to restart so rather than stopping and then starting the service it's always better that you use the restart command now the last two commands are very important especially the second last one enable whenever whatever we do in the system that should persist after a reboot all right they are not going to do any configuration they are not going to change anything whatever you have done that should be there when they restart the system because once you disconnect it is going to shut down and they are going to restart and then check whatever you have done is correct or not so whatever you do should be persistent so if you have downloaded any package it should automatically start at the boot time how it will do if that particular service is enabled so make sure that whenever you download any service any package you enable that using the system CTL command similarly if you want to disable it then you can use the disable command so starting is starting for that particular session enable is that the service is going to automatically start with every boot and shut down with every system shutdown so let me show you a few examples so we will make use of this chronic service only so let's first check what is the status crony t so system ctl status so you can see that it is active and is running all right if i stop it okay recheck the status and now it is stopped all right it's not active so once again press q to come out of it you can start it again so start recheck it's active and running again now one thing you notice here enabled okay enabled here means that once we shut down the system restart it again this service will be active and running automatically all right this must be there with every service that you have used with the system or that is required in order to run any of your questions so it should always be enabled so you check the status make sure it is enabled if it is not enabled so let me show you that also so now let me disable this particular service so how to disable system CTL disable and then cron D if I now check the status so you can see here it is disabled all right so what you can do is you can restart your system and you will see that this particular service will not be running it is running now because it is in the start mode but since it is disabled so if you restart the system now this service automatically will not be running you will have to start it okay but if you enable it which you should always do enabled and now if I check the status right so it is enabled okay make sure that this any service that you might use or is required for any of your questions is enabled so that's all for today so I hope that you are three more questions closer to clearing your red hat exam